This is Special Chronicles, giving respect and a voice to people with special needs. I shudder thinking how the world could be so cruel. I lend my voice to those who can. It's time we try, it's time we care, it's time we stand. It starts with the Welcome to the Special Chronicles show. My name is Daniel Spakowski. I'm the founder of Special Chronicles and a Southern Survival Global Messenger alum with Special Olympics. A website, specialchronicles.com, where you get to my archives of over 700 Get the episodes absolutely for free and to follow Special Chronicles on social media, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Again, specialchronicles.com. This week on the Special Chronicles podcast, so excited to uh, welcome uh, a new uh, friend and fellow Special Olympics uh, athlete. Uh, uh, who is uh, also from Special Olympics North America and uh, is Wyatt. Wyatt is uh, an athlete leader from Special Olympics Nebraska and a newly selected Southern Striver Global Messenger from 2024 to 2027 joins us this week as a fellow podcast host to talk about his journey to this elite athlete leadership role. Uh, please put your virtual hands together as we welcome Wyatt uh, to the Special Chronicles podcast. Welcome, Wyatt. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Awesome. And I'll just imagine our um, audience, I mean, you, you, as you go out and speak as an SSPM, you, you get used to that, that applause. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was cool. But it's good to to have you on the program. I just want to thank uh, my uh, mentor, Karen, for um, uh, dropping me a text saying uh, uh, you should have uh, Wyatt on, who is a fellow podcast host. So it's good to um, get connected with you. If Brandon from uh, SOI is listening, it's a little well, a little bit ahead of the connecting. Um, yeah. <laughs> But it's um uh, it, it, it's it's uh it's 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 exciting to get connected with you. Yeah, like I mean, I'm excited to come on. I I've seen your podcast and stuff you've done on social media, and then uh when you asked me to come on, I was like, okay, sure, like that'd be great. Um, this is my awesome. second time I've been on a podcast. It's different on the other end, but yeah, it's great. It is. <laughs> It's different on the other end, and you said that you've listened to my, uh, um, you've listened to and followed my podcast before. I probably shouldn't be surprised now, fifteen years later, that uh, <laughs> that other athletes um, uh, have have followed and listened. But for all those, why don't we share how uh, share with the listeners how we got connected, um, uh, and just to let them know as in SS. GM alum, I am um, my all class. We are your uh, predecessors in this Southern Tribal Global Messenger world. So share with us how we got connected, and then what disability you were uh, uh, diagnosed with. Yeah, so we got connected through people in the Special Mix International, you know, uh, community. I'd say, and I've seen like your face on the Special Olympics International website. And so that's when I kind of, I didn't know you know who you were, obviously, but I was like, I've seen that guy before, but where? I was like, <laughs> it's like, oh, right, the internet. I've seen him on the page. And so, uh, yeah, I just kind of know you from that. And then people, like, I think when I went to like, Capitol Hill Day this year to speak to senators about Special mix, people, some people mentioned your name to me, and I was like, oh, okay. Cool. I think yeah, it rings a bell, but I like, you know, I was like, I could remember your name, but couldn't put a face to it. And then when I saw your face on your know, I was just like, I know that guy. And then I forgot, you know, but then when you started texting me, I was like, that's it. I got it now. Like, I know who he is. 
<laughs> I, well, and now, and now, since you um, also from the U.S. and uh, and our, our special Olympics North America region, uh, it'll be for for you. And um, I should uh, I should have uh, should have done a little bit more research before going on the before we started recording. Um, and I'm going to pretend like I I knew this off the top of my head, um, but. You know, the uh, other special Olympics, the, the other southern, the SSGM from uh, North America region is Susan from up in Canada, correct? Yeah. Yes. So we were the two that got picked from for, uh, North America. And uh, so kind of go back a little bit. Uh, I knew nothing about like what this was. My old boss, Stephanie Sorensen, told me to apply. And he's like, you should apply for this. Awesome. I was like, okay. <laughs> and I didn't really know what it was at first. I just was kind of doing, you know, what your boss tells you to do. And then, yeah. and then like I was filling all the application and everything. And during that process, like, uh, I, well, one, the application was really hard. Like, it I, have, forever. I, have, yeah. it, it, I, I have to say, like, even five years ago, it, it was hard. Like, it, it is a difficult yeah, like, application. The questions weren't like, they weren't like worded complicated. Like, com- wait, they weren't complicated, complicated wor- with the words and stuff. It was more like they just made you think, like, really deep. And it was just like, you'd write something and be like, okay, that doesn't sound great. How do I make it sound better? So I, I mean, I worked on it for like probably three weeks, four weeks, yeah. and then um, fast forward, um, my my boss gets another job, and so then I get a another cool boss, uh, Emma Slaughtery, and she's kind of like I told her about how I apply for this job, and she's like, oh, that's great. So then she was in she- on kind of like getting the emails and stuff if I would get the interview, and she's like, you got an interview, and yeah. I made like the top twenty five. Um, and then another cool thing was one of my teammates, my doubles partner, actually in tennis, uh, she applied to Haley Wagner and she also made the interview process as well. So I was just cool awesome. for the state of Nebraska, just to have two athletes in the interview process. And then, you know, my back of my mind, I'm awesome. just like, yeah. And then the back of my mind, I'm like, it's cool. You know, I'm applying for this, but you know, I'm not going to try to get my hopes up too much because you're competing with yeah. people around the world. Like, you get it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 totally. I, I get it five years, uh, five years ago. Um, we are going to put a, a quick pin in, 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 uh, in talking about um, uh, applying to be an SSGM. And, um, and so we'll come back to that in, 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 in a couple of segments from now. Yeah. But, one, uh, I thought we, we could take our listeners back to uh, your um, uh, both uh, story of when you were born. So yeah. all this is your your full story, and then we'll we'll come back right, right. to where you yeah. are today. Sorry, I get ahead of myself uh, sometimes. You know, <laughs> it's fine. Cause I guess we 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 started with today being an IGM now. We're going to flashback, just like like in the movies or in books. We're, we're going to flashback to your both story, and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll come back. Um, so we'll do a little uh, flashback. If I had some cool um, uh, effects, I, I would do that. But um, I don't. Um, I have any cool effects, anyways. Uh, so to share with us, you were born prematurely with uh, many health challenges. Spent seven months in the NICU. Which similarly to me, I spent I think twenty five weeks in the NICU when I was born. Uh, but uh, and then you also in your early life had had well, it was full of uh, a lot of different uh, um, surgical procedures. So can you share with us uh, and tell our listeners about your both story, uh, including what disability you will? Yeah. So before we get all into all like the kind of trauma. The fun fact is I'm a twin. So I have a twin brother, uh, Weston, and he did not have a disability. Uh, he did deal with some asthma when we were kids, but nothing like keeping him out of sports or anything. 
but <laughs> we were born. Uh, I was born two months, yeah, two months premature. I was supposed to be born May 1st. I ended up being born uh, March 7th. And what happened from what I can remember, what my parents tell me is well, when I had trouble like breathing and then my, when I was born, my esophagus wasn't attached to my stomach. And so I ended up having like these surgeries. It was called a T fistula and it's like one in 15,000 babies get it. And I was just the one that got it. And I, I had those surgeries where they just created like this like wrap that would connect my esophagus to my stomach. And so I've dealt with that my entire life. I actually have like some problems with it today that aren't great, but um, a lot of stuff I deal with today go back to just all these surgeries I've went through. Uh, there was times like they couldn't even like wheel me to the uh, operating table because they would unhook me. And then I'm kind of like start to code and they'd have to bring me back. Um, I've been life flighted before. There's all these surgeries. And I'm kind of thankful that I was a baby because I don't remember any of this, you know, <laughs> a lot of trauma. And, you know, yeah. you know, I feel bad. I feel bad for like my parents because, you know, they remember it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, just like all this stuff. I just know it from pictures. And then uh, I have all these scars on my stomach. So I so went you- through them. Yeah. And so, yeah, I like them because like, I think my scars is like, I don't need a permanent tattoo. I got scars, man, you know? I know. Like, <laughs> that's, a, that's a perfect way to look at it. Yeah, because it was the same with you. I, I've got a, 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 a lot of scars on my stomach, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, who needs... Yeah, who, who needs tattoos? Tattoos <laughs> when when you've got um, uh, uh, scars from, 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 from when you were born. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, we're not going to go spend, like, 300 bucks on a tattoo. I mean... You know, our parents probably spend money for us to get these scars, but hey, we got them, and it was free for us. And you know, it was tough, but hey, they look cool now. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I went through that, and then just growing up, I had two older sisters, Michaela and, and Jessica. Um, so it was like four of us, and then uh, just playing sports. I was super into sports. Both my parents played college sports. My dad played baseball. My mom played tennis. And then uh, when I was like in, I'd say like fifth grade, that's when I kind of like couldn't be involved in sports much anymore because my disability that I have is um, cerebral palsy. And I got that at birth, well, a couple of days after or sometime after because I went through all those surgeries, had a brain bleed on the left side of my brain. And then uh, got cerebral palsy. So cerebral palsy is my uh, disability. And then I, uh, so I always like struggled with sports. School was hard. Um, I struggled at reading. Even though as I got older, I tried to get better at reading. And then like, obviously like, you know, I go to school and work hard in school. So I play sports. Well, it's hard when your parents all of a sudden kind of pull you out of sports because it's unsafe for you to go out for the sixth grade basketball team because you get hurt. And so that was like really tough. I had like this really gut wrenching or several gut wrenching uh, conversations with my dad, about why I couldn't go out for sports and all that. So like for a year, I just went to the basketball gym at the YMCA and played basketball by myself, maybe play a pickup game. My brother and I would find guys to play two-on-two against. And I was a manager for Weston's teams, but I didn't have a team where I played on. So then I get involved in Special Olympics in seventh grade, and it's all history from there. Uh, My coach. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Awesome. Oh, yeah, no, awesome. awesome. We'll we'll get into much more of your story with Special Olympics. But, yeah, I I also play – um, basketball as well. Um, right. Let's just, let's circle back, uh, and, and and maybe we we have to just similarly we we did with Grace, another SSGM in your class from New Zealand. Uh, we did a lot of wink winks at Brandon, so maybe we we have to do a wink 
Yeah. We'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to wink at Brandon that uh, it'll be fun if we could play a basketball together or, yes. or maybe even do a live podcast together. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So maybe. Uh, yeah. So let's just kind of drop that little hint to Brandon if, 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 if you'll. Um, yeah, Brandon, we know uh, you're out there listening. So. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Brandon, if you're listening, uh, Wyatt and I would we'll, we'll love to play basketball together. We do a, a live podcast together as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> call it us as GM and then, and then the, uh, I'm part of So yeah. from the previous class, uh, let's now, uh, talk uh, as we all know in this move in the special Olympics movement, it's not about our challenges, but, to give some more context to our listeners, what are a few of the challenges because of your disability? Uh, I read in, um, I'll, I'll, I'll let that fourth wall down to let our listeners know the show prep for to have you on why it was so easy because um, I read your bio. And so, uh, like I told you in the pre-show, and so and so, you you live your life with an optimistic attitude. Uh, tell and, and so t- talk a little bit with us about the challenges because of your disability, CP, and then uh, uh, tell uh, tell us about the moment. That you were heartbroken when, when your dad would. Uh, I think you 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 just previously yeah. shared with us. Yeah. Uh, the, the, tell us about the moment when you were heartbroken when your dad sat you down in middle school and told you that you could not play organized sports because it was too risky for your health challenges with CP. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, with CP, I struggle like really physically. Like yeah, I, some of it's probably intellectually because, like I said, I struggled in school. But uh, mm-hmm. like physically, I just I'm not very strong, and I try to use everything with my left hand. You know, my left hand does a lot of my work of what I do. My right hand, I try to like focus and like do stuff. But I have to, like I can't like like with my instincts. I can't just open a door. I have to like grab the knob with my right hand. Tell myself like, all right, you gotta turn it this way to open it. And then I kind of use my shoulder to open it too because just not strong enough. So it's like things like that or like what really frustrates me on days when, you know, I, I can't open like like a little baggie or like, you know, a little candy bar or something. Like it's just too hard to open because my fingers aren't that strong. And uh, I think maybe I have some CP in my left hand, but not much because my fingers are pretty weak. And it's just like doing like the simple things like that is frustrating Cause you just like I should be able to open this, but I can't. And then um, I wear like inserts on my feet. My right foot kind of sticks out, like the opposite direction, mm-hmm. like to the right. And then um, I wear like this thing called a walk aid. And what that is, it's like a cuff, and it's like got these electro pads on it, and it like gives you a little shock, and it lifts your foot up because like the place on your leg where the nerves are to lift your foot up, like we're dead in there because of my CP. And so I've been wearing this cup for like over 10 years. And so that's been really helpful. But before that, I had to wear like braces and stuff. So walking and running, you can tell I walk and run with kind of a limp. So that's tough. And because it's a physical disability, uh, like standing for long periods of time, even playing sports, like, I just get this like soreness in my legs and this like burning feeling sometimes in my feet and it has to do with your cerebral palsy. It just uh, is kind of, you know, affects me, like I said, physically. And so like when I do anything like physically active, so anything that's not sitting down, um, it just really, I can really feel it in my body. So I try to stay healthy as much as I can. That's probably stuff I do well and, Stuff I could do better, but you just don't want to sometimes, you know. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, so cerebral palsy really kind of drains you. Uh, it's hard to explain. Like when I talk to people that, that have cerebral palsy, they get what I'm talking about, but there's this like tiredness to it. 
you're just tired at the end of the day, like everyone else, but it's like a different kind of physically. Mm-hmm. Like you use, like, I think I read, you use 10 times more energy than somebody that doesn't have cerebral palsy. So like I'd go to school as a kid and then I'd come home and my brother and sister would go out to play and I would just go home and watch TV because I'd be exhausted from school all day and sitting and walking around trying to just do what kids do. And then as an adult now, you know, going to work, um, I used to work in retail a lot. So the standing of it would make me like pretty tired at the end of the day where I'd really like, if I worked four days a week in retail, then three or two of those days, I really had to like mentally push myself to go shoe baskets or go practice tennis. And then I knew there was always one day, like, I physically cannot like go work out. I'm so tired from work right now. And it's just my cerebral palsy. And like now I have a nice job, which we can get into later, but it's a sit down job and I can sit down all the time. So. Awesome. Awesome. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that uh, in uh, a little bit later in the segment. And I'm sure I have a feeling, um, and, and, and maybe it's because we're both podcast hosts. Um, We'll probably have to have you back on the the, the podcast because I'm sure those 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 other <laughs> other topics, yeah. even based on talking about today, that we we probably could could, could go on and on oh, and yeah, on. But sure. that's, if Brandon is listening, uh, we'll have to uh, <laughs> uh, see. We visit a lot. Have a, yeah. We visited a lot of these topics. Oh, if for those of you you that are listening in, if there's anything that Wyatt is talking about that you want us to to um to t- um do an- another podcast episode about um you can email um you can just drop me a note feedback at specialchronicles.com feedback at specialchronicles.com or you can send us a message on uh, Instagram or Facebook uh, and you can find all of our links contact and social media on specialchronicles.com at specialchronicles.com uh, the link will be in the uh description in the show notes below uh I, i'm pointing as if the audio podcast listeners can <laughs> yeah just uh, if you're listening to my voice just look down below uh anyways uh briefly be, before we we get on to our next uh segment and we'll get in we'll, we'll get into much more about your story in this movement your story in special olympics in in the next segment but first i thought uh, as we all know in what um the challenges uh, um, because of our disability is um, like one of my journalism professors has said, it, it's the foundation of, of, of who we are as humans, but it's not, a, as we all know in this movement, it's, it's not about our challenges. And so what, what we talk a lot about both in athlete leadership and in special Olympics in this movement is about our joys and accomplishments. And, and, and that's a lot of the focus of even this podcast on special is talking about all joys and accomplishments and so briefly um uh, and again we'll talk more in in, in the next segment but kind of just give us maybe a brief um uh one to two minute uh ex- explanation of a few of your joys and accomplishments because of your uh, disability yeah so i love to play basketball and tennis are my two main sports um uh, one of my com- – well, two accomplishments for that is I played in two USA games, one for tennis, one for basketball. And um, what was cool about that is I realized that when you have a dream in life, sometimes it doesn't always happen at the right moment, but it happens. I, I worked eight years to make it to the, my first USA games, and I, uh, I made it for tennis, and then I worked 15 – for 15 years, yeah, to make it for basketball in the next USA Games because that was the first sport I ever played in Special Olympics. So that's what I wanted to go to the USA Games the most. And so just to like do that, to be able to play both at the USA Games was pretty cool. Um, I won a gold medal in doubles with Haley, my doubles partner. And then with basketball, I got to play unified. And one of my unified partners was my twin brother, Weston. So just two great – experiences so those are my main two and then um, awesome yeah 
Awesome. I've got so many um, questions about the USA Games, but we're going to get to that after uh, this first break right here on SpecialQuanticles.com. So we'll, we'll continue our conversation with Wyatt after this first break right here on SpecialQuanticles.com. Support for Special Chronicles comes from listeners like you. If uh, you would like to help us operate, uh, operate our studio and uh, keep the lights on, continue our mission of giving respect and voice to those of us with disabilities, and uh, you can uh, uh, support these weekly candid and honest and empowering conversations within our disability community, uh, you can uh, support this podcast with a monthly or one-time gift of things today, specialquanticles.com slash give. That's specialquanticles.com slash give. And now, as I fade that down, back to a conversation with Wyatt. Wyatt, welcome back. And uh, I tried to fade that. Uh, I think that sponsor break was a little bit Longer than what I, I need to work on um, trying to cut down those sponsor breaks. So we will uh, try to work on making that ten seconds, but it's it's hard. Anyway, when you've got a big exactly. long script, exactly. Um, with yeah. that, um, in the previous segment, you had just talked about com- competing at the USA Games, and um, we'll we'll um, we'll come back to that because I, I, so, I have so many, so many questions about that. And I'm sure even our, 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 our listeners might have some of the same questions. And again, if, if you guys are listening and anything that Wyatt has, is, as, as you share your story, Wyatt, if any of you are listening, have any questions, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're, um, if you're listening on Spotify, uh, on Spotify, uh, there's a, there's a, a comment box, I believe you can uh, leave your comments on, on, on Spotify uh, and, or you can email feedback at specialquanticles.com and uh, yeah, people just just go to this episode on Spotify and 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 leave your comments and we would love to uh, 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 heal from from you. And if you have any questions from Wyatt, maybe we can compile a bunch of those questions and comments and have you back up, back on the program, uh, Wyatt. Uh, but. You mentioned a little bit how you you guys got involved in Special Olympics and this movement. Um, why don't you? Uh, I think maybe my video. My, there we go. Uh, why don't you share with our, our listeners why and how you got started in our Special Olympics movement as an athlete? Uh, the that hope that that you had that you shared in the previous segment had toned you into competing in basketball and tennis. Um, just like you, I also competed in basketball. Um, my team, uh, the beginning of this month, we'll, we'll tape this in February. February. Um, uh, my team got first place. Uh, I think I, over two games, I, I scored 18 points uh, uh, nice. at the beginning. Nice. Uh, and so share, share with us how you got started in Special Olympics and as, as an athlete and in uh, kind of a, 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 a little bit more of of, yeah. Of that. Yeah. So, I like I said, I couldn't play uh, sports anymore on my brother's teams. So my parents are trying to find me a league to play in, and they got in contact with the Special Olympics in Fremont, Nebraska, where I'm from and grew up. And my coach Corey Piercy, you know, told him I'll bring him down. Like we'd love to have him. And so I'm, like, 13, go to my first basketball practice. And, you know, like, when you're 13, you're used to, like, playing with people your age. I go there, and it's, like, teenagers, like, high school kids and, you know, people that are 30, 40 years old. And I'm just this 13-year-old that's, like, looks like he's 11 or 10 because I'm, like, like that small. And, yeah, it was quite an eye-opener, but I loved it. Like, I was good at – the only two things I was really good when I first started at was ball handling, and then I could pass. And so shooting I had to work on, but um, I just remember starting with basketball with Corey, and then I did track too. And then, like, 
uh, I think the next spring. So yeah, 20, uh, or no, 2009, I started playing tennis and then I fell in love with that and it just went off from there. I, I do tennis, like basketball and tennis, like I said, but football is kind of the other main sport I do. So those three are the ones I do, like I stick with and then, uh, I'll switch back. Like I just started softball last year. That was super fun. And uh, I might do, I think I'm going to track this year. So yeah, I just started with Fremont, played with them for 15 years. It's great experience. And then when we got to, I got to college age, uh, that's when we started playing unified, having unified team instead of playing traditional. And that's when my brother started playing. And my brother was actually, my coach in high school when we had a traditional team. So I got my brother, your head coach, and then our best friend, Kenny, who's my, uh, just to say the spoiler, he's my mentor for this SMGM or the so uh, Sergeant Shriver, Global Messenger. And he's yo, like my, yeah, he's my mentor. Yo, um, no, my yo, Kenny. Is my, Kenny, Kenny yo, um, uh, yeah, friend. Uh, your, your friend. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, Kenny, my friend. So he's he was our best he's our best friend and uh, he was our assistant coach. So for the first, we're well, not the first first two years, they just came to watch me play in middle school, and then freshman year, I kind of like I just told Wes, I was like, "You're gonna coach my team." I was like, "He's like, I am." I'm like, yeah, because we need someone that actually like, plays high school basketball right now. So you're gonna be my coach because I'm the manager of your team. And so you're going to help out my team. And then Kenny, <laughs> it's sophomore year, us, the next year, us. Uh, we just kind of like convinced awesome. him. Yeah. And we convinced Kenny to go out. Like, Kenny, just do it. It'll be fun. Yeah. And he, he loved it. So that was fun to have them as coaches. And then they transferred from coaching to playing with Unified and been taken off ever since with basketball, football. I've played Unified tennis with my sister Jessica a couple times. So, yeah, it's been really great. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, I have, I, I've only done tra- traditional sports, not um, uh, uh, unified sports yet. But yeah, it, it sounds like a, a lot of fun. And I'm sure, I'm sure it, uh, the um, unified sports w- really shows people how you're able to play on the same team yeah. with 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 others who, who don't have disabilities. Um, now this is the point, and I, I I'm adding this to the show notes because I have so many questions about. At the end of the at the end of the uh, first segment, you talked about going to the USA Games. Um, what which um, I myself and uh, a, a few of the other SSGMs from a, from your previous class, uh, we were at the USA Games in Orlando in 2022. Which uh, which USA Games? Uh, uh, and uh, have, have you competed in what uh what sports did you, did you compete in those and 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 uh, tell us a little bit about that what what that what that experience was like uh, to compete on the um, national level yeah <clears throat> excuse me so uh so 2018 was when Seattle and that's when I played tennis and that was really cool because like we played in like the fifth division Haley and I and uh that was like the second highest level because then after us was like five plus and um it was pretty fun like my first match I was really nervous and everything but then I just kind of thought about all the surgeries I've gone through in life and I had gone through a surgery four years before that a back surgery that was really serious and so I just like oh this is if I lose you know, it's not as bad as like having a surgery. So I just like kind of kind of calmed me down. And it was like just a dream come true to make it to my first one because I thought I was going to make it to 2014 was when it was in New Jersey. But I had this major back fusion surgery. I had scoliosis like extremely bad and I couldn't go. So that kind of was like what pushed me to recover on the really tough days was I'm going to make it to the USA Games in 2018. So I made it to Seattle, and I played against some really good players. Um, a cool thing about Seattle was we made the 
finals for doubles, Haley and I. And we were down uh, in the third set. It was a third set tiebreaker. So real quick on tennis, you played six games. Uh, they both win. We both split a set. Then you go to a tiebreaker, play to 10 points. So we're down like four to eight, two more points, and we lose. We get second. We came all the way back, and we won 10-8. It was crazy. So like just to get oh. that was pretty insane. And then, um, but yeah, like, but like competing at the high level, there's highs and lows. And a low competitive wise was for singles. I made to the semifinals, played one of my really good friends, one of my best friends, Matt Brima from Illinois, who has like the same cerebral palsy that I have. And I lost him in a third set tiebreaker in the semifinals <laughs> so uh and then i won the third place match i played really good in the third place match but uh yeah just like competing at the highest level like that taught me like you know you're just an inch away here from winning or losing and that's what i think a lot of, of athletes want like yeah we're out there to have fun which special is really you know branded itself on but we're also athletes like we're here to compete yeah. and we yeah. want to win and like, yeah, we don't win, we don't win, but you know, we want to play against the best. Yeah. And so, like, I bet you, you're you're like that too, probably. Like, you want to play. Yeah. Against yeah. Your yeah. Team. yeah it, exactly. Like, I know, like my 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 uh, uh, basketball coaches, or so, uh, even like when I was um, swimming in the past. Hopefully not forcing that much. Um, what I'm trying. Uh, there you go. Okay. Yep. Uh, we're back. Uh, yep. So what? Uh, what I was saying was, yeah, like like my my basketball coaches say that yes, it's uh, having fun, but like like what what you're saying, um, we 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 when you watch. Uh, we we get into the competition. We 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 get into the um, game, and we yes, we'll we'll have fun. But like we, we're like, competitive. Like competitive. We're, yeah, like, we're, we're competitive. Just, yeah, like people are like yeah, you know, it gets heated, but it doesn't get heated to like a bad point. It's just like you know, you're just playing intensely. It's like. Oh, someone falls down on a basketball drive, or guys are fighting over a loose ball. It's just like, yeah, because we're athletes, just like high what? school or college athletes. Like, college. yeah, or, or or even the professional athletes as well. We'll yeah. we'll we'll competitive. Yes, we have fun. Yes, there's the the athlete oath. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Yes, there's that. But there's also the the competitive sides. It's um, and I think even Tim Shrivel um, uh, uh, um, talks about this that some people might when they hear that that world special uh, Olympics athletes they went oh those that cute thing that's going on, but it's not that. It, it, it's like what you just said. It's like what what I just said. I'm sure many of the of the you know millions and millions of special Olympic athletes across the globe will probably agree with us that it's this this movement, this competition that we play throughout the the, the whole year. It's not this. It's not this cute thing. It's it's this. It's just actual sports thing. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, like you know, like we're called Special Olympics, and it's nice to say like, oh, that's a special athlete right there. Like, that's good. Like, you hear that all the time in the pros. Oh, that guy's special. He's really good. But like with us, I think people sometimes overuse it, and it's like they, like they think of us as special as like it's cute, but it's like no, like we're actually like good athletes, and I think people we need to start saying is like. Like we're capable, we're capable athletes. We can do a lot in and outside of sports. And I think people think like we're just your your local 
fun, cute YMCA sports. And that's not true at all. Like people like don't understand, like, no, like we actually train, we train for our sports all year round, no matter how many we play. Um, like we're not like your 40 year old guys. It's like sitting on the couch. I'm going to go play in my pickup basketball league for the week. And that's it. Like, no, like I'm like, I'm doing drills, like in the 95 degree heat, Nebraska weather in the summertime for tennis. So I can get ready to compete at this tournament. I go to in January where it's the top 30 tennis players in the United States get invited called the experience. I'm training for that basketball. We have, I have my state ba- or regional basketball tournament this Saturday. And I've been training for that ever since the season ended last year. So from April to whenever our regional tournament is like, I'm training for that all year round. So I think people just need to see us as like, not just these people with disabilities. We're just athletes, you know? Yeah. Yep. We're just athletes. Yeah. And and it's it's like um, the, the first um, special Olympics unified cup that took, took place in 2018 in Chicago, um, my, my mom and my mom and I were, were there, um, we were up in the, uh, on press box and she even said, and, and same when you competed in it and when, when I competed, she said like, this looks just like, so like for, and for those of you that are wondering what the unified cup is, if you say football, we mean soccer <laughs> for our in, yeah. in, international um, <laughs> audience, but like, for example, the uh, uh, Unified Cup, whether it's the one that took place in Chicago, the first one in Chicago, or the one that took place a couple years ago in Detroit, uh, the it's just like you're watching any other, like like the World Cup or or any other competition. It's it's that's all competition. Like what we've been saying for the past five minutes, it's it's the same type of competitive competition and I, I and that's uh that's something that's something else like as an ssgm as a sunshine of go messenger that you and like what i've been doing the past five years when we go out and talk to whether it's different businesses companies um different uh um community leaders that's what we'll educate them about, right? That's- yeah, exactly. Like, we're just educating them. They're like, look, like, everyone is, like, everyone can be belong to Special Olympics. But now it's different. Like, there are levels. Like, and some of them are elite levels. Like, we have this soccer team called the Union. It's called Union Oma. It's a minor league soccer team. So it's like a, it's a pro soccer team. Well, they have a unified team that you can try out for, but they cut you if you're not good enough to make the team. They're not saying, oh, you can't play soccer. No, you just you didn't make the Union OMA team that travels and plays other teams from other states. You know, and I think it pushes athletes. Like, it pushes athletes like, oh, I'm going to get better and I'm going to make the team next year. Or like um, the athletes that made the team, they don't just – they're not just guaranteed a spot for next season – they have to train all year round again and try to make the team the next year. And I think it's great they're having thing stuff like that because, like, I think we got to show, like, there are a lot of us athletes that, no, we want to, like, be at the top, compete with the best of the best, just like you would in high school, college, pros. Like, just because we're Special Olympics doesn't mean we're just here to, like, Oh, we're all going to play at the same level. Everyone has a different skill level, and some people are better at one sport than the other. Like the soccer team, I'm not trying out for the soccer team. I'm not going to make the select soccer team, but I play on the local level. I'll play on the local level. I'm good on the local level for not really playing soccer that much, but I'm not going to go out and try out for this travel soccer team when I don't even practice soccer that much. You know, I mean – one of my, my one of my best friends, Garrett, uh, he's on the soccer team and he's on it because he practices a lot and he puts in the work and he makes a team. So I think people gotta learn that we're just like 
right? Like I said, high school, college, pro sports, there's tryouts, and there's going to be an elite division. But if you don't play in the elite division, or not like other sports where you we cut you and you can't play, we got other divisions where you can play and be competitive. So, absolutely, absolutely. Well, we we all um, we should have had like forty five minutes. I know it like time time flies. Um, yeah. So we're gonna try to kind of keep the show moving so it's not too too long for our listeners. Um, but of that sport competition that we, we've been talking about for the past <laughs> ten minutes, if it, um, what what what's really important is for us to be healthy. And uh, I was trying to find some way to tra- transition this topic, but um, it, it's important as uh, for for what our listeners, uh, I mean, what you know, and any other health messenger knows is that Special Olympics is the world's largest health program for people with intellectual disabilities, uh, and so uh, we'll we'll try to keep um, some of this a little bit brief, but. Um, what what you told me in the pre-show is um, similarly. This is an, an, uh, another uh, thing that will um, similar about is um, both becoming health messengers and uh, you, you you took your first one uh, virtually on Zoom, which just like me a few years ago, I took my first health messenger training um, virtually on Zoom, and then just recently. Um, um, we both not not in the same state, but in yeah, you yeah. In the, yeah. in me in Illinois have um uh you, you've recently been trained as a health messenger and our paid health in in tone at Special Olympics Nebraska, um, and uh, so this, this past weekend uh, I became a trained health messenger and in March 2020 along with our director of health and coach services at Special Olympics Illinois. Um, I co-hosted a five power health mini series on this. Uh, am I a little, little frozen here? Let's see if we can uh, uh, get <laughs> un frozen uh, there. There we go. Let's see, uh, there we go. Okay. Back. Yeah. Oh, back. So. What what I was saying was uh, that uh, in March of 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic started, I co-hosted a, a five-part health mini series on on this podcast. And so, turning it back to, to you now, uh, what why did you want to become health messenger and a paid health intern? And tell us about uh, about, about about this yeah, experience. So. Um... The one like tells me they just kind of asked me, you know. I honestly, sometimes I don't go out looking for these great opportunities. Special Olympics uh, offers me. They just kind of ask me if I want to do it. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not gonna say no. I mean, they give me a good, op- like, great opportunities. So then, like, they asked me, you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, it's during the pandemic, so it was something to do and would be interesting. And then um, I did another one like in person with like people from Nebraska. And then I, I thought it was important for me to do it. Cause I have all these health problems. Like, I just want to say this real quick. Like ICP has nothing that my cerebral palsy has nothing to do with my health problems. I could have gotten cerebral palsy and not had health problems. But like I said, cause my esophagus thing, I have a bunch of health problems. So just like two different things that I deal with, but because of my health problems, I feel like, you know, I have to try to stay healthy. Just the play sports are just for my everyday you know, life. So I thought if I could use what I experienced to help somebody else in Special Olympics and outside of the Special Olympics um, be more healthy just to like play sports or just to live a more healthier lifestyle, then, I mean, if my voice can help, then why not? Like, just speak up and hopefully my experience is good and bad with my medical conditions has motivated someone to want to stay healthy or to get more healthier or to train at their sports because like like we do healthy athletes at our summer games and that's such a big you know thing and a big it's a great thing because it's just doctor's appointments that 
are free that can help us like either get glasses or um you know get good dental or just like with our motor skills like is there anything ever wrong i have heard several stories about of athletes going to healthy athletes and like they didn't even know they had some foot problem or needed glasses or there's something that's just not right and they would have never known that if they wouldn't have gone to healthy athletes and mm -hmm. i just think that's a huge bustling to have that it's in all states like our big one is at our spring games in may so if any nebraska athletes are listening go to healthy athletes in may <laughs> we'll get out the date here oh. soon but but uh oh, even, yeah. oh, even just any special uh, athletes that i'll whether you're in the Brisco, yeah, like just like any athletes, like Illinois or any any state or country, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like Illinois, Nebraska, you know, go to your healthy athletes. Uh, I don't know, we go to like clinic. That's it. That's what I was looking for, clinic. Yeah. And um, uh, you know, because it's really gonna help out. Like I got new glasses there several times. Um, it's cool. They like see your feet. Yeah. Right. And they're free. You know, you know how much yeah. like glasses cost? They're a bunch, man. And I've, yeah. I mean, I can't tell you, there's probably over 50% of people I've seen like athletes in special Olympics. I'm just guessing, but I just seen a bunch of athletes wear glasses all the time. So it's just like, yeah. you know, like it's good to get that. That's like kind of my number one, like, all right, wear the glasses. I need new ones. <laughs> I need to go get some. And like like uh, dental, I think, is the next important one to go to. It's really important to go to the dentist. I know with me personally, I've had some insurance issues every now and then with seeing the dentist. So going to the athletes is always a big, helpful thing to do. And then just like they do feet. And, you know, if your feet hurt. Like that, I've had back problems before. And uh, they could say like your feet can lead to like back problems. And as someone that's had back problems, like that's never fun at all. So just like being healthy at going to healthy athletes and learning about health and using it out outside of healthy athletes, like in your sports or just in your everyday life. Cause if you're not healthy, like it's just hard to get on the playing field or, you know, just enjoy life because you're struggling with some medical thing that just is hard and it's hard to get back to where you were when you're not feeling good. So Awesome. Absolutely. I totally agree. Uh, I'm sure we could spend a whole episode just on talking about healthy athletes and, and, and being a health messenger. And, and so maybe we'll, maybe we'll have to, and again, I want to remind listeners if you're listening on Spotify or, uh, or uh, um, leave, leave us a comment or, um, or uh, drop me uh, a note feedback at specialchronicles.com feedback at, at specialchronicles.com or go over to Spotify and, and, and drop us a comment and let, let us know if there's any topics uh, that, that you want to have Wyatt come back on the podcast. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure Wyatt, if, if any of our listeners want you to come back on the podcast, I'm sure we'll, we can talk more about yeah, some of these topics. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so, moving moving right along to athlete leadership, uh, can you we um, you have a I, I um, read in your bio that you have a love of speaking about overcoming adversity, and have had the opportunity to participate in many speaking engagements on behalf of Special Olympics Nebraska, and now which we'll, we'll get into in the, in the next segment mean, about being a Southern Tribe of global, global global messenger. And so now you're speaking, uh, your, your your athlete leadership is going to be taken to the global stage. But thinking back on, can you is, tell us um, when when you got involved in athlete leadership and and how and why that you wanted to get involved in athlete leadership? Yeah, so I thought I just thought it was a good way to give back to the Special Olympics for everything they do for us. And then kind of like back to my story, I found out um, the months go along and it's like right before Christmas and I'm talking to my boss or my supervisor, Emma, and like my parents came to the office because I went from being a Special Olympic intern to 
Now I'm a program associate for yeah. special weeks practice. So I'm a part-time employee now, not an intern anymore. So I walked into like the conference room and I see something on the screen and I'm like, this might be what I think it is. Cause I just remember on the, the form you f- fill out, like we'll let you know uh, the week before Christmas. And I was just like, wow, this is, this might be it. I kind of assumed that's what it was, but didn't want to get my hopes up. And sure enough, Tim Shriver does the whole awesome. So we're going to put a, a, another quick pin. We'll, okay. we'll get into um, more because uh, we'll, we'll leave our, our uh, I'm listening to us on the edge of the seats for cool. the next segment. Um, so uh, for those of you who listen, keep listening because you do not want to miss um, hearing about um, why it's reaction to be in a SSGM. And uh, get, and uh, we're gonna uh, move um, quickly on, on and just just because I'm looking at the um, um, recording clock here, and uh, <laughs> we are at about 56 minutes, so we'll, we'll we'll we're gonna move on. I hate to rush any part of your story, but um, becoming a podcast host, um, similarly to you, um, I I've been podcasting for uh, 15 years. 15 years now. Um, how long have, have, have you been? Um, I think it's been uh, like, I think, oh man, like probably I think a year and a half, maybe or close to a year and a half. Seems like longer, awesome. but um, awesome. yeah, so awesome. I've been doing so, that. awesome. Yeah, so in addition to this weekly podcast, I there's a couple other athletes that have podcasts on our network on the, the Special Chronicles network and. And and uh, and so I've developed this into a platform. But coming back to you now, Wyatt, um, you you won two podcasts with your, your best friend. Another, um, you were just telling me in the pre-show with your twin brother, and a fourth that you started with Special Olympics Nebraska uh, to to, to uh, promote health and fitness. Can you uh, share with the listeners um, what all? Uh, and I'm sure we we could talk about podcasts. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, a whole episode. This this could be a, oh, yeah. a whole. We could do like several. I'll be back on, man. I'll be yeah, back yeah, on. yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, you, 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 so again, if Brandon is, is, is listening, um, now that Wyatt and I have got connected, we uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll have you back on. Uh, uh, so um, many more times throughout your tome as an SSGM. But what are the titles of your podcast, which I am I am now following and listening to one of them, but what are the titles of your podcast? Why did you want to get in, into podcasting? Uh, how has podcasting helped you in, in athlete leadership? And, and yeah. yeah. So um, I got into podcasting because I thought it could help me, like show people what I was capable of, like getting a job. Which worked. Now, I, now I work for Special Olympics, and so "Be Unexpected" is my first podcast with my best friend Jake Burnside. Then the Special Olympic one I do for work is called "Brave in the Attempt," where it's about health and just athletes and coaches. And then my one with my brother is just called the Spalling Brothers Show, and that's just talk with my brother about stuff we did growing up and what it was like for me with a disability growing up. So. Um, yeah, it's kind of didn't think I'd run through podcasts, but it's been fun. <laughs> and uh, the one my brother kind of came up with out of the blue. I wish he would have told me he wanted to do it like a year and a half ago, but I think Jake was the better. <laughs> I'm glad I did it with Jake first because he was more reliable on helping me, and it's gone really well, with Jake. So, uh, yeah, my brother one was just like, Really? Like, now you're telling me after I'm running like two? He's like, Yeah, come on, man. And it's like, all right, all right. So yeah, running three, and we get. I'll come back on. We get more into that another day. But, uh, it's been great. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll we'll definitely have to have you back on, and and um, we can um, definitely um, um, talk more about some more the, more of the podcasts that you've done. What uh, so what what have you seen has been the, the impact of the. Um, the, the three different podcasts that, that you have um, uh, uh, that, that that you are hosting and co-hosting. 
what what have you seen as the 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 the, the impact on the uh, 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 listeners? Yeah, so I uh, think just making an impact, like it had an impact on someone's life. Like people always think about making an impact. You need to impact, you know, a thousand people. Like this SSGM, like I don't know, I haven't done it yet, but I hope I get to speak to a thousand people someday with this mm-hmm. SSGM. But you know, if you can impact one person, that's that's all you need to is you could impact one person's life and then they could impact one and, and then they impact one just is down the chain and um like like the one I'll just go on the one I do with my friend Jake, you know, we interview people from our hometown that made an impact on us or that made an impact in the community. And yeah, we we have some famous people on there, some Nebraska football players and stuff like that. But I think it doesn't matter if somebody famous or if just some local coach trying to make an impact in his players' lives. I think uh, as long as you can make an impact on someone, because everyone's doing something great out there, you just don't know it because everyone's trying to do their own thing to, um, you know, get where they want to be at in life, and so just like Megan, that small impact because you see their excitement when you ask them to come on is like all I need to see is like, oh, I'm doing the right thing by doing these podcasts. And then uh, real quick, just the health thing, trying to get people yeah. more educated about Special Olympics, just like you do with your podcast, oh. obviously. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And then my brother one real quick, that's for fun. And we kind of talk about some serious stuff and people are some – reason fascinated by twins or what we have to say i don't know but it's just oh, so awesome fun doing your twin so yeah oh, oh. oh wait. yeah yeah oh look, you, there back. we go back. there we go you were saying <laughs> yeah just uh fun doing your twin and um i think like with my twin interviewing me he can get stuff out of me that I didn't even know, like I was thinking about or something I say that I guess he says is really impactful. So that's kind of like really cool to see. So I think just in all the three podcasts, make an impact on people's lives, even whether it's a big stage or a small stage, it's still an impact and hopefully a positive impact. And then uh, it really helped me just boost my confidence and speaking obviously. And, getting to know people, good connections. And it, it definitely worked what I wanted. I was trying to get um, a good uh, job. And that's how I got my job with Special Olympics Nebraska was I heard about my Be Unexpected podcast and wanted me to start one for them. So I was like, wow, it worked. So Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's it's amazing the opportunities that can come from the podcast. Like for – Example like uh, becoming an SSGM, even though yes, the application was difficult. But I think a big part of the podcasting over the years that, that I have done helped helped me to even become an SSGM, or even to be selected to um, be one of the special athletes to work at United Airlines. So it's it's amazing, like the, the opportunities the podcasts have come. Where can our listeners follow and listen to your podcast? I'm sure wherever, I'm assuming wherever our listeners are listening to the Special Chronicles podcast, this this podcast, um, they they can find your podcast as well? Yeah, so uh, just, you know, Apple Podcasts. So the Be Unexpected, Brave the Attempt, uh, the Spalling Brothers show, it's on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Uh, Be Unexpected. We have a YouTube channel. It's just at Be Unexpected YouTube channel. And then the Brave the Attempt one, it's on the Special Olympic Nebraska YouTube channel. So it's Sony, at Sony, Sony Nebraska. And then um, the uh, my, bra- my one with uh, my brother is just on my, my personal YouTube channel. Life with Wyatt Spaulding. So I'll just say again, Be Unexpected. Uh, Be Unexpected YouTube channel. And then uh, Special Olympics Nebraska. Uh, the Special Just type in Special Olympics Nebraska YouTube channel. And then the uh, 
uh, my mom and my brother, just my personal life with Wyatt Spaulding. So, uh, huh? yeah. And then like, yeah, mostly, like I said, just the normal platforms. So. Awesome. Awesome. So you'll have to, um, uh, off air, you'll have to send me uh, links to, yeah. um, to, uh, your podcast and the uh, YouTube channels. So I'll make sure. So wherever you're listening, if you guys are all listening and you, um, uh, don't have, uh, don't have time to write this all down, uh, we'll make sure to put links in this journals for this episode of the Special Chronicles podcast with with um, Wyatt. So just look down where where you're listening. Again, if you are driving, uh, <laughs> walking, um, don't look down now, but like look down when it's safe to, to look down. <laughs> I have to say that. So hopefully, if you, if all listeners are driving or whatever. Or, uh, we want you to be safe. Uh, with that, uh, the Special Olympics Nebraska Hall of Fame. So in 2023, so last year you were inducted into the Special Olympics Nebraska uh, Hall of Fame. Can you tell us about this experience and your initial thoughts of, of getting this uh, um, honor? Yeah. So that's probably one of the – people don't really know this, but that was probably one of the top moments of – just my special career, getting into the Hall of Fame. One, I didn't even know there was a Hall of Fame. I uh, <laughs> I found out like probably two or three weeks before I got uh, selected from a meeting I was in at work. And so I was like, man, when I'm like 40 some years old, I hope I make it. And then just to make it this last year in 2023 was awesome. It was kind of fun. I actually didn't get to accept it. Cause I got sick and uh, my siblings were like, well, that's kind of perfect because that's your adversity you've overcome. You've been sick all the time and yet had to come back and train and get back into shape and play special sports. So I still got the plaque when I got it and my work gave awesome. it to me at my job. It was really cool. And then I got to go into the hall of fame with uh, one of my best friends, uh, Haley Wagner, who is my doubles partner. She went into the Hall of Fame as well at the same time. So, and then just real quick, uh, I think the real special thing that made it cool was that it said Fremont Special Olympics because I played with them for 15 years and they're what got me started. Awesome. So it was really cool to have awesome. my own town on there on that plaque. Awesome, awesome. And moving right along uh, to uh, 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 you know, hobbies outside of Special Olympics and podcasting. Uh, you, uh, I, from your bio, it's it's not that I'm I'm psychic, but I've read well, your bio. Uh, yeah, it's that, uh, you love reading bi- biographies on sports and crime, uh, and you also love uh, listening to podcasts. Which, just like you, I love listening to podcasts. I have probably uh, too many podcast that i am following to listen oh, to in too. a week oh my god I, yeah uh, me too man I, 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 mean, so I, I, I hate to unfollow but like i don't know everything from from comedy podcasts to uh um um, um christian podcast to um uh, family podcast to special olympics podcast like there's so many podcasts that i am following um, but with that, can you, what are what are um, one or two of your favorite titles of um, biographies that, that you like to read? Um, but I'll, and then also, what are a few of the podcasts that um, if if um, like I mean, I use the Apple Podcasts and Spotify to listen. So yeah, me like, too. Uh, on your Apple Podcasts and and, and Spotify, what are um, just uh, just a few of your favorite podcasts? Yeah, you, you yeah. Like? So. Like book wise, I mean, I guess my favorite book is uh, One Shot at Forever. It's just about a small town team, actually in Illinois, a uh, baseball team. And they uh, uh, compete against schools like three times their size and make it far into the baseball state tournament with a coach that is like back in the 70s or something, but a coach is kind of like a hippie. And so it's pretty <laughs> cool. And then, so that's one of my, that's probably my favorite book. And then uh, for podcasts, I really like the three and out podcast. It's an NFL podcast. Listen to that. 
Um, and then just anything college basketball is probably my favorite thing to watch. So I probably listen to like too many college basketball <laughs> podcasts. They're all like the same topics, but I just want to hear everybody's opinion and takes. And then for crime wise, I just like crime documentaries and I like real time stuff. I like military. I like reading about like what happened like in the military, like in the country. So yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, we um we are time until over the hour. We're gonna take just take a quick, quick um break here and we'll um we'll we'll come back with uh, our final two segments that we'll try to make quick uh which uh, uh we 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 hate to <laughs> one long we'll say you you guys can pause and come back to this and listen to this at any any time uh the this episode uh uh special chronicles is also brought to you by cam ad uh, the Comed Energy Force Ambassador Program, which is the country's first energy and solar efficiency education program designed for and taught by people with disabilities. You can learn more at specialchronicles.com slash comed at specialchronicles.com slash comed. And Special Chronicles is also brought to you by United Airlines Bridge Business Resource Group. Uh, Bridge is uh, committed to being an ally for all employees and customers with disabilities. Uh, and, uh, Bridge uh, is uh, keeping accessibility needs in mind and keeping key organizations to empower disability inclusion for employment and travel. Bridge connect, connect the people of our Bridge connecting people of all abilities. You can uh, book your travel today on United.com or on the award winning United app. You can learn more at specialchronicles.com slash United. At specialchronicles.com slash United. And with that, as we fade that down, I tried to have that be uh, uh, abruptly. And this is the point of the episode. We uh, left our listeners on the edge of those seats um, earlier on in this episode. Um, but right now, uh, we're going to get your uh, live reaction, uh, Wyatt, to the announcement of, of becoming a Southern Survival Global Passenger from 2024 to 2027, right here. Hello, I'm Tim Shriver, and I'm the chair of the International Fan Chief. But my great honor today is to let you know, you know. that you have been accepted. Reward. Welcome. Congratulations. Congratulations. You have won this award distinction because of your work, because of your determination, because of power of your voice because of the example you've had for other people who have joined together to say we believe in you and now in this role perhaps one of the most difficult but most important roles in the entire special movement i welcome you and i encourage you to find and define the goals that you have that can superpower the inclusion revolution we know you have it in you that's why you were chosen but we also know that you have even more in you than you've yet to get. My dad, Sergeant Shriver, for whom this program is named, traveled all over the world because he had one central belief, that the Special Olympics movement could change the world. You are now the holders of his legacy and of the passions and hopes of all of us. You now are invited to travel all over the world and let them know that the power of inclusion, the power of grit and determination, the power of openness and trust and belief in the goodness and dignity of every person, these values, especially, can change the world. You are 
Now, Sergeant Shriver, Global Method. Thank you for all you've done that got you here. Welcome to this extraordinary, powerful community and fellow athletes. And I now get ready to stand back and watch as you change the world. Congratulations. And there is your clock tower Sergeant Shriver, Global Messenger. And we are going to try to come back here, Wyatt. Uh, wow, that was quite, quite a reaction yeah. <laughs> to uh, Tim, uh, our, our chairman of Special Olympics International, and as Tim says, our fan in chief uh, explained a little bit what uh, uh, that what a Southern Tribe of Global Messenger is, and for. Uh, any of our listeners, uh, long-term listeners, for the, at least for the past five years, uh, have had have heard from me uh, and my experience of being in an SSGM. But for you, um, right before we get to you, I want to share with our listeners that a Southern Tribal Global, what a Southern Tribal Global Messenger is for 20 years, Special Olympics athlete leaders have served in a select role in elite role titled Southern Tribal Global Messenger. These spokespeople for the movement lead the campaign for a more inclusive role for people with intellectual disabilities. Through their participation and leadership at global, regional, and local events, both internal and external to the Special Olympics movement, they challenge the mindsets of political leaders, policymakers, educators, employers, and society. And now why, as our, our listeners just saw that reaction video, uh, of you and your class of us as GMs, share with us uh, again. What was your reaction? You you uh, you uh, teased our listeners a little bit um, earlier on in the episode. Yeah. But so now, back to when I'm the- walking in the room, I see it. I sit down, and they they say, "Congrats on your." You know, being part an employee of Special Olympics Nebraska, you're not an intern anymore. You're an employee. So I'm like, great. And I kind of knew, like I said, I kind of knew what it was, but I didn't want to get my hopes up. So the video runs. My parents were more shocked than I was, and <laughs> they just like could not believe it. They thought it was just some like holiday thing. Tim Trevor saying happy holidays, and I was just like, as he was going through. You know, my parents were shocked, and I was just like, "Wow, I did it! I I made the Sergeant Driver top ten, and I'm gonna have this amazing experience." And I just, I was just trying to soak it all in. But my parents were shocked. I was just trying to soak in the moment, and uh, it was just really cool. I got picked because when I started the process, I was like, "There's no way! Like, you're competing with people around the world, like." I know I'm good, but yeah, you know, it just it's people around the world. Like there's so many people to pick. So it was cool. absolutely yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a big, big honor to be chosen among millions and millions of athletes and athlete leaders to select only ten of us. Um two from our, our North America region, but like yeah. ten from across the globe is such a such a, a huge, huge honor. Uh, a lot of we, we responsibility as well. It, it's not just a title, but it's like you have an opportunity to speak on behalf of the movement, speak on behalf of all of us athletes, and and to join. Like once you're an SSGM, once you're a Southern Tribe of Global Messenger. You're always a Southern Tribe Global Messenger. So yeah. you are joining our SSGM uh, family. Why did you want to become an SSGM? And 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 what all what all as as well as what are a few of your goals uh, for this uh, 2024 to 2027 tome? Um, so I wanted to join because I wanted people to hear my story. Kind of hear what I've gone through, what I'm kind of going through now. Like, you know, I still deal with medical conditions on a day-to-day basis, and you know, life isn't easy. But 
you know, you're going to face adversity and you got to overcome it if you want to achieve stuff in life. And I hope my story can kind of say that. And I want to speak and be a huge voice for Special Olympics and make a, an impact on Special Olympics that, you know, people will remember that's a good impact and, you know, change Special Olympics, make it even better, even though it's, it's great now, but, you know, you can always improve. And I hope I'm a, a small or big part in how we can change Special Olympics, Special Olympics. now. Yeah. So, and then, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, just kind of, like I said, with the impact thing with my podcast, like, yeah, 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 podcast yeah, yeah. or impact, you know, you want to leave a good impact on someone's life that you helped help them and you made somewhat of a difference. So I'm just hope I can represent the North America good and make a, a difference in people's lives for the better. And uh, I think like I, I told people, like it's my big break in speaking. Like I think I'll, I finally kind of got like on a big platform. So I got to go out and deliver. So yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I- and I'm sure you, you're going to do a um, great job. And as 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 one of your uh, predecessors, uh, as an SSGM alum, I'm here to su- support you. And now that now that we've we've got e- e- each other's um, um, phone numbers and emails, yeah. you can you can reach out to me anytime. Uh, and I'll be happy to um, um, help you as well. What you just shared on the the impact that you, that you hope to make in your SSGM tome, uh, I love that you said that uh, that you hope to uh, share with 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 people and the community about the uh, overcome that that they. Two can overcome obstacles in life and go for their dreams, just like a lot of athletes have done. And I think that's a big message. I'm uh, that that I'm sure you, when you speak to audiences across the globe, hundreds and thousands of of of, of audiences, that you'll be able to uh, similarly to what you have done. In the past hour and twenty minutes, uh, sharing your story on this podcast, what, what, how you shared your story on your podcast, but yeah, it, it, it'll be an incredible to um, watch you on this uh, um, global uh, stage. Uh, when, when the when when Special Olympics International had shared the reaction video that our listeners just just watched a few moments ago, watched or oh, listened again, if you're listening to the audio podcast, um, Tim, our, uh, uh, Tim Shriver, our chairman of Special Olympics and fan in chief, recently uh, posted on, on his social media the, and the announcement of your class. I don't know if you saw, saw that, but Tim had a, a challenge for your SSGM class. Uh, and he challenges uh, your class to push the transfer of inclusive sports and create a world where everyone, regardless of their ability, is accepted, choose to include. Can you briefly comment? Um, we've, we've got uh, just a few moments left. Can you comment on on um, Tim on, on Tim's challenge for your class? Yeah, I think the challenge is like we need people to see Special Olympics as not just, oh, they're special, like they they just play these sports so they can play and they have fun. But we want them to see it like, oh, it's Special Olympics. It's just a, it's a competitive sports organization, and these athletes, not kids, athletes are, you know, working hard for in and off the playing field, and it's an organization where everybody can be involved. I hope Special Olympics is just like – high school or college sports some days, or maybe I don't know how they would do it, but you have like a minor pro system. I don't know, like, like, yeah. uh, like you send some tennis players to play at the U S open or have a select basketball traveling league or, you know, just like any other sports organization. That's what we are. We're not just your local one to two years of basketball tournament. 
We are a national, international brand, and we're just like any other sports brand that is trying to better athletes, coaches, fans, volunteers. And the big thing about us is we include everybody. Everyone's invited. So I hope people just see us and give us respect on what we do and just show us, you know, show us this respect that we give everyone else. And I can't wait to see it grow. Like I really do think one day unified sports will just be another high school sport you sign up for. And that's awesome. What I to make a deal. Absolutely. Well, we've got five minutes left. We're going to try not to go over this. Yeah. You know, and it's, I guess we've already got 25 minutes over the hour. So uh, can you share with us uh, social media plugs uh, and have you mentioned your podcast uh, where people can follow and listen um, all four of your podcasts, but also I'm sure our listeners are going to want to uh, follow why your SSGM journey on social media. So how can our listeners follow your SSGM journey, Instagram, Facebook, yeah, YouTube? So- Instagram, Facebook, uh, my YouTube channel, Life with Wyatt Spaulding. I'll be posting a lot on that as Kenny and I, uh, Kenny's my mentor, like I said, uh, travel throughout uh, the country and the world. And then like my uh, my Instagram handle, just Wyatt Spaulding, Wyatt Spaulding 1. And then uh, my podcast, Be Unexpected 100. You can follow the podcast there. The Sony uh, Nebraska, Special Olympics Nebraska, uh, Instagram and Facebook page of Sony Nebraska. And then uh, the it's just called the Spalling Brothers. That's uh, my one I, podcast I do with my brother. So those are my social media handles. And, um, yeah, just like I said, the main one with the SSGM is my Live with White Spalling YouTube channel. I'll be posting – a lot of stuff on there with the what Kenny and I will be doing. I'm going to try to film a lot of stuff from waiting for our plane to <laughs> who knows what we'll be doing, you know, traveling the awesome. globe. So Kenny and awesome. I, and I'll probably awesome. wait on Kenny and Wyatt do, you know, whatever we're doing. So Awesome. Well, uh, speaking of that, when I, um, what I did was I, uh, I, I kept a um, newsletter called Daniel's, uh ssgm uh journal and i had people so like so i had all my friends and family uh and people across the country uh and across the globe could enter their email and subscribe my update so similarly to what you're going to be doing with your um youtube channel so uh yeah i'll if uh, if you can uh, send me a link to your uh, um youtube channel I'll, I'll make sure for those of you, you listening, put that in the show notes so you all can subscribe to why it's a YouTube channel and, and, and keep updated with, with the, with, uh, and follow his, his journey and his adventures. Uh, with the, with that, before we get to the final question, um, it's been a blast the past hour and a half having you on the, the special Chronicles podcast. I'm sure this was, this won't be the last time you, I'm sure you'll be a two-time, three-time, four-time, five-time well, guest. We're going to do a lot together. We're going to work a lot together. So. Yes, we're, we're going to definitely yeah, work a lot together. So, again, if Brandon is listening in, um, we uh, – <laughs> yeah. Come on, Brandon. Get Come the, on, Brandon. Yeah. Get the hint. <laughs> yeah, you get the hint. You get the hint. <laughs> uh, with that, I'm sure Brandon won't be surprised. But yeah. anyways, with that, um, do you have before we get to the final question? Do you have any final thoughts on on your overall time here today on the um, Special Chronicles podcast? Yeah, I think uh, you've done a great job. It's very organized, and uh, and you take some organization skills from you for sure, and just <laughs> in life in general. And uh, I hope to like my podcast will grow as much as yours has in the past fifteen years. You've done it and. I just like that's awesome. You've been doing it 15 years, and I now that we're both in the podcast world, I like I definitely want to work together more. I think we could have some great shows on my podcast, your podcast, and or just combine something and do it together. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, we'll we'll definitely have to talk um, off air and either uh, have like a like a cross like a um, yeah. crossover episode or. 
even um, you know, even down the road, even um because st- like we've been talking for the past hour and a half uh maybe even like yeah. um yeah. Uh, i'm starting a ssgm maybe we could even start a ssgm a podcast yeah where we post together yeah that'd be, uh, that'd be, sick. That'd be cool yeah. awesome so uh maybe we might want to talk, talk to brandon about that but um yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I think yeah that could that that could be really cool. So with with that, we're gonna uh, we've got um, a bumper. We're, we're gonna go ahead and roll this bumper that will introduce the final question as we wrap up uh, our, our time here today with Wyatt on the special chronicle. So so let's oh wait, I have to um, pull up. I had a different um, so many audio clips here. Uh, I, I'll make sure to play the, the white white clip, but let's go ahead and roll the bumper. We're not just athletes. We are the ambassadors of an uprising. Peaceful protesters. In a rebellion against anyone who has a fear of difference. Different. Difference. Our demands are equality. 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 Dignity. 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 And the recognition of our shared humanity. We will not stop or accept anything less. Today, our world is more divided than ever. And coming together has never been more urgent. The revolution is inclusion. Find out more at jointherevolution.org. Ever since I attended the 2019 Special Olympics World Games in Abu Dhabi five years ago, I've been asking all of our guests one final question. And as you know, uh, well, as you know, from participating in Unified Sports and and being involved in this movement uh, and like what our chairman, Tim Shrivel, talks about as well, inclusion and the inclusion revolution is a big part of this movement. And it's important. Yeah, inclusion is also important with the podcast that that you do and the podcast that that um, I do as well. So we'll, we'll conclude. I think that this final question should leave our listeners with something to uh not just listen to your story, but to take into their own lives, take into the uh, their own communities, and 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 learn from hearing your story. And so, with that, what does inclusion mean to you? So, inclusion means to me is you gave everybody a, chan- a chance, give them a shot. Doesn't matter what they look like, how big they are, how tall they are, where they come from. Give everybody a chance. Because you don't know what everybody's capable of until you see it. And uh, I think that is uh, what inclusion means to me is seeing what everybody's capable of. Because everybody's capable of something. Absolutely. Well, that's a perfect way to wrap up this episode. I want to remind all of you listening in uh, to support our Special Chronicles 2024 giving campaign. At Special Chronicles, this podcast and this podcasting platform on specialchronicles.com. We're trying to raise $15,000 to operate our studio, keep this microphone on, keep the technology plugged in, the lights on, our website hosting, podcast hosting, video hosting, all that. Uh, it's free for you to listen and watch, uh, but it, it costs money, us money each month. So go to specialchronicles.com slash give at specialchronicles.com and click on give now to support those podcasts with a monthly or one-time gift. And you can support, we, you can shop our merch still. We have merchandise. I'm not wearing it today, um, but uh, Wyatt, and for all of you listening, if you go to specialchronicles.com slash shop, uh, the 60% of the profits, that's 60 or 60% of the profits will go back to, spe- to support Special Chronicles. We have T-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, candles. Yeah, who would have known candles? But uh, go to spe- specialchronicles.com, click on shop, and you can uh, shop our merchandise store, our Disabled Voices Matter uh, line of merch. And with that, keep following the Special Chronicles podcast. New episodes drop every Monday. Uh, so go ahead, uh, if you're not following me yet already, go tap that follow button on Apple Podcast, Spotify, subscribe to our YouTube channel, our newsletter, follow us on social media. You can find all, the, all those links, on, again, on specialchronicles.com, as well as the stream our archives. Our, um, uh, this weekly podcast, the Georgia and Daniel Show podcast, I do host calls with, with my girlfriend. And all the all, uh, original series. You can find all of that at specialchronicles.com. Click on listen or click on watch if you would rather watch, if that's more, more of your thing. 
with that, thank you again, Wyatt. It has been a joy having you on. I'm sure we, 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 will, we will be in touch. Uh, but both as a GM related uh, uh, yeah. stuff, but also, also uh, podcasting as well. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Daniel. It's been great. Awesome. No, no problem. And um, have a great night. Or oh, if you're listening, have a great morning or afternoon or whatever time that you are listening or watching this episode. Until then, uh, maybe we could say choose to include at the same time. And until then, remember to choose to include. include. Yep, that was okay. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of the Special Chronicles podcast. Our podcast was produced by Daniel Smukowski on the Special Chronicles Network. Follow Special Chronicles on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Subscribe, rate, and review Special Chronicles on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Our website, specialchronicles.com, where you can stream our archives of over 500 episodes for absolutely for free. Also, there's a list of our favorites, original series, award-winning columns, and blogs. And sign up for our newsletter to receive exclusive bonus content delivered to your inbox. Again, specialchronicles.com. Special Chronicles is hosted by Podbean Podcast Hosting. Our live streams are powered by StreamYard. Thanks, as always, to our business manager, Adam Smukowski, who always in- encourages us to never give up. I'm Daniel Smukowski, back next week with more stories. Special Chronicles. Giving respect and a voice to people with special needs.